again, YouTube, this is Dr. Kendo, and this is the Scribblenauts Unlimited Object Editor Commentaries, where I create your favorite characters from movies, gaming, TV shows, all that kind of stuff, here in the Scribblenauts Unlimited Object Editor, and we're starting off with a chupacabra, the spelling is up there at the top, just in case you don't know, uh, you should stick with the male version or whatever, because the female design has some extra stuff on its torso that we don't want to show up there in the final version, but anyway, we are creating something that I think is amazing, actually a lot of some things that I think are amazing. This would be Bill Cipher's Hench Maniacs from Gravity Falls. Yes, I think that these characters are epic and uh, Gravity Falls is, you know, something that I think is really awesome, but the problem is I just don't have a lot of time to watch extra things on TV, you know. Uh, my life basically revolves around the YouTube channel and my wife. And then a lot of other side things, I guess, but when it comes to TV, you know, if it's not something that my wife is watching, usually I don't really have time to watch TV. I'm doing all of this, or I'm caring for my dad, or I'm doing something outside in life, taking care of my two dogs, hanging with my wife, whatever it may be. Anyway, hopefully you noticed we took the shin from Cthulhu, so if you type in Cthulhu, just grab that front shin, you know, just above the foot. So then we're gonna put that over the chupacabra's uh, legs and feet, you know, I, you can hopefully notice that I shrunk those down pretty small, and then we're gonna take the back arm right now of a bodybuilder. The other thing, of course, to note was that uh, the torso of our chupacabra Cabra right now is much bigger in size compared to its default, I guess, for how it comes. And speaking of, we actually copied that torso and we're going to put it here on the chest. This is going to be for the other color of its, you know, stomach and its chest and things like that. And so then we're taking Cthulhu again and uh, just grabbing that front forearm of Cthulhu. And so this is going to connect the bodybuilder arm, that back arm that we've just placed on, uh, to what we're going to now put down, which is going to be the sticky hand. So we'll use the sticky hand hands as uh, the big hands of our character whom I don't even think I mentioned the name yet. Of course it's 8-Ball. Hopefully you guys noticed that as we're creating it right now but first of many hench maniacs I guess is 8-Ball uh, here. I'm not going in any particular order you know like not the order that they came out of the interdimensional portals or anything like that or the order that Bill mentions them. No, none of that. But I will note, of course, we are only going to create 5 of the hench maniacs in today's episode and then I guess a major announcement will be that it will be in two parts. So of course we will finish out the rest of the Hench Maniacs in part two. So hopefully you see here we've put Mothman's legs down and I think I will change those out because we do actually want a different design possibly for the legs. I'm gonna take a look at what this looks like. We'll go with Cthulhu again and grab his uh, front foot right here and uh, the puck right now that is above this foot on his right leg to our left. That puck is supposed to be like the shackle or the piece of shackle I guess that's there on on his ankle. And so now we're actually going to be taking a shark pup, the back fin. This is going to be for the many claws all across these sticky hand fingers right here. And yes, the sticky hand only has four fingers, so whether you're creating Five Nights at Freddy's characters and you say, you know, oh, some of them have five, some of them have four, or Futurama characters which have four, you know, the sticky hand has four. And I put hair down three times, one on each arm and then one on the leg over there. The other leg is being kind of covered up by the shackle and only has one point on it in the cartoon for Gravity Falls, so it's not as important, I guess, uh, you know, we did run out of stamp space pretty easily. And of course I put another puck there above his right hand, or on his wrist. That's for the other shackle, and it has a halo as the chain coming off of it. But usually whenever I'm in the properties editor here, I read background information and fun facts, because while we're doing scripting and things like this, there's not a lot of action that goes on screen, so here we go. 8-Ball is a green demon with a white chest and stomach, large ears, and magic 8-Balls for his eyes. He appears alongside all of Bill's hench maniacs during the events of Weird Mageddon in Gravity Falls. I love his voice, although I haven't seen much of the Weird Mageddon episodes. I have seen some clips, though, and am understanding the general idea of it all. Lastly, of course, about 8-Ball, there are some interesting fan theories that he had been indirectly hinted at a few times in the series prior to his appearance. Uh, what with the magic 8-Ball in the gift shop, one of Stan's fake ID cards showing Andrew 8-Ball Alcatraz, the magic 8-Ball on Stan's 
Kane. But of course, other fans just say, well, it makes sense to incorporate a Magic 8-Ball with Stan as a symbol commonly associated with fortune-telling for his Mr. Mystery persona. The world will continue to theorize, I guess. But we started off with the head as the source object. I showed you what it looked like if you wanted to have eyebrows above the 8-Balls, but basically when you do type in 8-Ball, this is what comes out, sort of an oddly shaped 8-Ball, and it actually does not say the number 8 on it like you think it would uh, in Scribble Knots Unlimited, but you just type in 8 and that will get that for you. I just typed in a shark and took the back fin and that's going to be for the ears on either side. And we're going into the 29 page library right now to grab this arm on the 22nd page, sort of near the bottom middle. Paint that all black, do it twice. That's going to be for the little nostrils right there for his nose. And then of course a tongue for the tongue. Down here at the bottom we put a rectangle behind that tongue that's all painted black so that there would be black within his mouth. A scorpion, the top middle piece of the scorpion's tail, I should say. Do that twice. That's going to be for the teeth right there and then fang on either side for the other teeth. The big fangs or incisors. Of course, two eyebrows down below for the lips at the bottom. And this piece of an octopus right here. It's like the second most straight piece. It's like a very straight but has a little bend at the end of it. All right, so we're going to need to move really quickly. This episode's already over five minutes in. And so we have a new hench maniac right here that we started off with a square as the source object because we're going to be creating amorphous shape. This thing is insane. This uh, does take a little finagling and trying to, I guess, get the right amount of stamp pieces on and get everything in the right form. Because, of course, whatever you start with a source object, you want it to be small enough that it won't be seen around when you're creating the rest of the design. So we're basically using a whole bunch of shapes from the geometry library. Of course, you see three squares kind of turned into a diamond shape right there at the top above the square source object. And then covering the square source object is a cube that has all different kinds of colors painted on it. And then two squares down below that cube and this diamond shape right here and I'm just now sort of resizing it and making sure that it's in the correct position. With all of these you're going to want to of course be moving it away from the source object and be taking it away from the grid of that and so it only lets you move it to a certain point using the arrows. So what you need to do is resize your item to be really big then move it up or down away wherever you want it to be moving and then shrink it back down to the size that you want it to be at. So you're going to have to keep resizing and then shrinking to get it in the correct position because let's say you make it really big put it where you want it and then you try to move it after you've shrunk it the game actually will make it snap and default and move back down where you don't want it to be so you have to continuously make it big and small big and small only move it when it's big basically so of course we used a football that would be like american football i know that football in other countries uh does mean a soccer ball but yes an american football right there for the whites of the eyes a dot is going to be for the little dot or pupil in the eyes and whisker for the eyelashes and of course we've named it amorphous shape and so it's not finished yet we will have a part two but i'll go into the scripting since this is the main piece of our amorphous shape this is like amorphous shape one and so of course we'll read some background information really fast for the properties here amorphous shape is a strange living assortment of square or diamond and cube shapes among a few others that can levitate and fold itself inspired by a rubik's cube amorphous shape has never actually said any dialogue in gravity falls it's a pretty interesting looking character and it floats like that right there and we can actually add a few more details since we do have just a few more stamp pieces. I think there's actually only one left. One or two left. But we'll do a squid right now. You take the end tentacle of a squid so it has that little triangular point on the end and this will be like those weird protrusions that are sort of hanging off of amorphous shape. There is of course another one and as I mentioned we are going to be doing a part two to amorphous shape right now. So starting off with a glue as the source object because we do want this to act like a glue and be able to glue it onto our other piece basically, in essence. And so you saw, of course, just a bunch of geometric shapes, the squares and stuff all going down and uh, placed in this kind of order with the football and the whiskers and all that stuff once again for the eye and another squid little tentacle piece coming off the edge of that purple square up there. And so now that we've put that over the glue source object, we're going to want to now attach this. So let's see, amorphous shape two will attach to amorphous shape one. Now, one thing that I'm noticing is it is just a little bit bigger on the bottom than it is on the top. The amorphous shape too is just a little bit bigger. So we'll remove it, then we'll
we'll go back to edit the object and we'll just shrink it down about three or four notches on the uh, plus minus scale right here. So I've shrunk it down now. Let's see what it looks like uh, this time. We will place it now, amorphous shape two, and I think that that's gonna be a lot better. So here we'll attach it at the most southern point right there. And it, yeah, it looks like uh, that's okay. So there we go, our amorphous shape. That was crazy. I was, you know, a little bit nervous hoping that we were gonna get this design right, but we've got it now. So that's excellent. We'll start off with a boy as the source object for our next hench maniac interdimensional crazy humanoid creature. This will be teeth. We're going to create teeth right now. So in the 29 page library, it's just a shape of general arms and legs and body parts and all that stuff. We're on the 27th page here on the right side, second row down from the top. Take that arm right there and uh, put it in this position. So it's kind of like pointing to the left, our left, I guess it's pointing to its right. And these are going to be for the big gums of teeth right here, top and bottom. And so we've got that down. I'll put a heart in there for the tongue. It's just really going to be visible only slightly. So of course, there we go. Uh, this is all coming together slowly, but surely. So a mola is also a sunfish, of course, but you can use mola for an easy name to call it. And uh, so that, just take that middle piece of the mola, paint it bleach white, as white as can be, and then put it right here. We've got four of them, and there's going to be four on the top, four on the bottom, and then one that goes in back also on the top and the bottom. That's to show some depth, I guess, that there are teeth behind that and whatnot. So here we go. Jenny Green Teeth will take her front arm right here and put that on the boy arms. Hopefully you can see I got the green grids turned on there for a second. Those were to show, you know, when we had the boy's head and the boy's arms and all that stuff. When we removed them, they still, of course, show a green grid where they used to be. So you do want to move those green grids out. You use that um, button in the top right corner of your panel of button actions. And so Jenny Green Teeth's back arm now is, of course, what we've used to put as the other arm right here in the back. And let's see, what can we do for the legs? We'll go with the Easter Bunny and uh, do that on either side, of course. So the Easter Bunny's front leg, and then we're going to take the Easter Bunny's back leg right here, put them over the existing boy legs. The reason that I would ever keep on the source object's existing legs like that, like we did, remember, with the Chupacabra, we kept its legs on even though they were very tiny. We shrunk them down so that they couldn't be seen around the legs that we put on our creation. But you do this so that your object will not sink into the ground. It's a feature of Scribblenauts Unlimited. Unfortunately, the objects do sink if you take away the original legs, but we'll read some background information on Teeth right here. So Teeth, of course, is the name of an interdimensional criminal appearing in Gravity Falls' Weird Mageddon events. I knew that I loved Teeth once I heard the voice of Andy Merrill, whom hopefully at least some of you know from being the voice of Brack. But anyway, Teeth is shaped like a pair of dentures, but with elongated limbs. I think he's fantastic and certainly one of my favorite of Bill Cipher's friends here. So this all looks fine and dandy. Let's move on. Of course, we got to move quickly because we've got so many characters in this episode right now. So we're going to start off with a boy once again as a source object. Take away basically everything except for that torso right there because you can't take that away. We'll put a square right here. We're kind of turning it over so it's like a diamond shape and uh, moving that square like this. We'll paint it this color for Cryptos. We're actually going to be creating Cryptos. And so a napkin is what we're going to place down next. And uh, this is going to be a little bit precarious, I guess, to try to get it in the right way. It looks like because I have everything kind of sized the way I do, I'll take away the square and then re-put it back down. Basically, if you place an item and then you increase the size of your entire creation overall, it will affect kind of the sizing of everything, the proportions and things like that. So there are kind of micro steps you can take to change the shape, I guess, or the not the shape, but the proportions. I should say, of all your various stamps. So now we've got it a little bit good. A sphere, of course, is at the top. We didn't put it on the head grid. That head grid shouldn't have anything on it. That head grid should just stay blank. But we've got an octopus, that same piece that we used way long ago for eight ball and whatnot. That sort of almost fully straight piece, but it does have a little bend at the end. With receiver gloves, those are what we're going to use for his little hands right here. And so these are all, all of this is going to make his arms. So we will put those, of course, on the grid for the boy's arms that you saw earlier. And a circle is going to be for the eye, or the main part of the eye. We're going to, of course, put the details in the eye now. So a black mamba will use the tail of that. You could also take the shark pup's back fin again, you know, just, you have a veritable plethora of stamps you could go through for that. It's uh, basically the eyelid skin, I guess, the little bottom eyelid skin for Kryptos, and a pimple for the dot in his eye. And we'll take a tube that's going to be for, like, that little protrusion that goes up out of his eye and on top of his head or whatever. And so, uh, of course, we'll take a uh, kidney bean, as you're seeing right here. The kidney bean is going to be for the mouth being open like that. He sort of has this uh, hilarious smile, grin, and uh, we'll take an angler 
regular fish, take that front fin right now, put it upside down and sideways from its default, and then a jellyfish will take the uh, upper tentacle piece of a jellyfish as the line between. So we've got these big buck teeth now, kidney bean pasted again in a different color for the tongue, and Humpty Dumpty, the back leg of Humpty Dumpty, will paint all black except for the shoes are in almost all black. It's like a dark black or dark gray. And those are going to be for his legs on either side right there. Pay as close attention to the scripting as you can for all of these, but of course we'll read his background information or fun facts. Out of all of Bill Cipher's hench maniacs, Crypto seems to have the design that is closest in resemblance to Bill's. In the concept art and early designs, Cryptos was originally going to be named Andrew and be colored purple. I actually saw a comment where someone had said Cryptos's laugh is from the same guy who does Flowey the Flowers laugh in Undertale. Although I should note that laugh is actually one in the rotation for public domain sound effects. It, along with so many sounds, has been used time and time again in various works. And uh, I haven't played Undertale yet, and so I don't know. if Is that Flowey's laugh? That crazy laughter. But here we go. We'll start with a dramatic chipmunk for our final hench maniac for this episode. Again, I didn't forget anybody. There's nobody that's going to be discluded in the end. We're going to even do the eye bats next episode. So we will create the rest of the hench maniacs. And of course, I've made Bill Cipher. I've made Ford. I've made a lot of the characters from the main family and all that stuff in just various episodes of the past. So please look at my playlist for this series and my channel to kind of see those things. But of course, we have Xanthar here. (laughs) And this looks insane. You want to make the body really big for the dramatic chipmunk and stuff because you don't want those legs to out proportion it, I guess, in one respect. But you also want this body, since it's kind of short and round, you want it to be as long as it can possibly get since Xanthar does have sort of a almost like hippo bear shaped body and stuff in Gravity Falls. But we'll take a uh, big foot right now. We're going to take that front foot. That's going to be down here on the front leg. Above that is a bull. B-U-L-L. Of course, the front, I guess, upper leg piece of a bull right there. It's its front legs, but it's the one that's in the back behind. And then a bear. That's what we've got highlighted right now. The bear upper leg piece in the... So it's its hind legs, the one that's in the back. We just took that thigh or upper leg piece. And so for the legs back here, because it's a little bit taller, they're almost the same shape, but we're going to take a Yeti. The Yeti's front foot, which has a leg attachment on it and stuff. And to not waste stamp space, we don't need to put another bear thigh on the back one right there. Again, it would use a lot of stamp space and be something that we can hardly see. So this kind of gets the idea across just having the Yeti leg on there by itself. So this is awesome. It's coming together so much, but we still need to make a few sizing adjustments and all of that. Of course, toast is what I used for the head, or I guess you could say extension of its body almost, because we did not put this on the head grid. We kept it attached to the body because the toast head doesn't move around a whole lot. And then a dunce cap is going to be for this little party hat that's on the uh, Xanthar, of course, with a pom-pom as the little frilly things on top of the party hat, of course. So that's all looking good. And uh, now we're just going to add in some of the other details, like, I guess, his toenails. We could put Xanthar's toenails. Right now, we'll use a uh, worm. That's going to be the middle body piece of the worm. And so, of course, attach it to each leg individually, paint it this dark bluish purple kind of color like that, and shrink it down. And if you ever want to test that you've put it in the right spot, you can, of course, move the worm body behind, like use the button in your panel of button actions to see if it actually does go behind the leg or not when you move it behind and uh, if it does then you're all good you have it on the right spot a pine tree we're gonna put down right now on this uh, leg right here actually we might move that uh, to the body after we do some sizing and stuff like that Uh, we'll put the pine tree on the body and it will have it on the legs of course in the end but I'm just trying to get all the sizing correctly Um, again we'll move it to the body because we for sure want it there there are actually two pine trees I believe right here on this leg that we're working on so we'll put another pine tree in the back and they're all painted this dark bluish purple color right here. Hopefully that's looking good. They're not shrinking down as small as I thought they would so we will kind of do some experimentation with the sizing and all of that after we do the scripting of course. So Xanthar, or the being whose name must never be said is another crazy demon hench maniac from an unknown dimension. The concept arts for Xanthar were going to make it look similar to an island having things like a river and a house on its back. The current version of Xanthar gives me a sort of Torterra vibe, as it has those trees all on its back and legs. Anyway, for me, it's a weird combination of freaky and cute, as it just looks like sliced bread with four gorilla legs running like a bull and sometimes making motions like a tiger, all on this, like, hippo gorilla body. So, uh, hopefully you notice we added some dots and stuff on the toast to make some extra details, and I added mud there on that front leg, and let's see if we can ride. Yeah, we can ride on top of our Xanthar. This is hilarious. Gosh, he is huge. I mean, that's that's appropriate though. 
he should be huge like that. And so here we go. This is, uh, I've got my Bill Cipher creation from episode 119 with the hench maniacs that we've created so far. So again, since there are so many of them and some of the creations, of course, were two pieces, you know, a head and a body separately. With all of that, those are my reasons that I am creating them in two different parts, two part episode. So I hope you guys are looking forward to the next one where we finish out the hench maniacs. Thanks for your support. Remember to check me out on Patreon where you can get many different rewards like having your Scribble Knots Unlimited object created automatically, even if it's not most popular or most requested, because that's usually what I do in this series. I just create whatever is most popular or most requested each week, but this is a way to bypass that and have your object created. So check it out. Anyway, I'll catch you guys on the next vid, and thanks for viewing. So you can be the viewer and uh, sit down the road up twists and turns always anxious to see what's within. We can look ahead to the point of no return to the rest of our lives as a spectacle we kiss. Uh, down the road of twists